This is The Good Government Show. We're lucky because we can learn from other large cities that grew rapidly, maybe in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and the mistakes that they made, maybe not preparing for growth. It's really about an under, listening, understanding before you make decisions. Um, I think rash decisions, especially in good government, good public policy are usually backfire on you, but at the same time, you also have to use instinct and make a decision and move on. I always tell people, your government is very close to you. All it takes is you to pick up the phone, send a text or send an email, and you're gonna get an answer to that question. so funny right now, especially in 2024, the conspiracy theory, government's out to get me, they're doing this. We don't have that much energy. 99% of the people that are in government are there because they want to be. They get recruited all the time to go do important work um, in the private sector, and they stay because they love what they're doing. Welcome to The Good Government Show. I'm your host, Dave Martin. On this episode, we're meeting Maddie Parker. She's the mayor of Fort Worth, Texas, but proving all politics is local, she's a friend of neighboring Wise County juror J.D. Clark, who we spoke to on a previous episode. In fact, her husband and J.D. are both musicians and they played together. So a little musical harmony going on in and around Fort Worth, Texas. As you'll hear, Fort Worth embraces and promotes its Texas roots. The city still has Texas longhorn steers herding through town twice a day on the way to the Fort Worth Livestock Exchange. It's part of the fabric of the city that Mayor Parker has to make sure is maintained. For a city on target to eclipse Chicago as one of the nation's largest metro areas, it's an issue at the forefront of their city planning. But they want to maintain their Cowtown image and their other nickname, Funky Town. So that's a lot of planning. Since we're talking about Texas, we talked a little bit about immigration. There's a lot to Fort Worth, and Maddie Parker discusses leadership and, of course, how to get good Tex-Mex food. So listen to my conversation with Mayor Maddie Parker, and that's coming up right after this. The Good Government Show is sponsored by Our Co. That means our community. Our Co. has found a way to make government more effective. Our Co. provides the OUR platform, and this is an app that blends in-person and digital interactions to connect people with their government, their county, their town, their state. The Our Co. app transforms meaningful conversations into reliable data. They can turn results into projects and programs the community has essentially already approved. It's sort of like a flash poll by phone, but without the call and in real time and wherever community members are. Maybe they're at their house or their office or uh, where they're out just talking about local issues. Uh, maybe the choice is between putting in more local buses or expanding the bike lanes. Our code can get you an answer immediately. With OUR, you can engage your citizens or any group. Learn what they want and build programs and policies that advance your county your job creators, your constituents. So visit OurCo.com, that's O-U-R-C-O.com, and learn how they do it, and while you're there, book a demonstration. After you get done with this episode, hear more good government stories with our friends at How to Really Run a City, former mayors Kasim Reed of Atlanta and Michael Nutter of Philadelphia, and their co-host, journalist and author Larry Platt talk with guests and other mayors about how to really get stuff done in cities around the nation. Check them out where you're listening now or through their nonprofit news site, thephiladelphiacitizen.org slash podcasts. Welcome to the Good Government Show. I have with me today Maddie Parker, who is the mayor of Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome to the show. Hi, David. Thank you for having me. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you for being here. The reason why I wanted to talk with you is because we've already talked with one of your sort of colleagues, uh, J.D. Clark, uh, county commissioner in neighboring Wise County. Yes, he's a, he's a county judge in Wise County. Been friends with J.D. for a long time. As I shared with you, he's also a musician and plays some music with my husband occasionally. Yes, so. he is. So He's a good so, man. So <laughs> you've heard him perform. I have. He's excellent. And, and tell us. Yeah, he's very talented. Talented, for real. Like he's not one of those that plays guitar and says he does. He's actually a lot of fun. I think he needs to quit his day job and maybe go on tour, but I don't think his wife agrees. No, no, no. I think he has <laughs> two little girls. He does. So. They're precious. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I think his, I think he said his performing days are behind him. So, uh, you, you know, in talking with him, I know, you know, a, a little bit about what's, what's happening in Fort Worth. But my first question is, um, 
Dallas, Fort Worth, tell me what the biggest difference is between the two cities. Oh, there's too many to list. We're incredibly distinct American cities. I would say Fort Worth is more your quintessential Texas city. Yeah. Um, really leaned into our Western heritage, but also really successful and focused on what progress looks like into the future. But I'm not a mayor that's going to trash on Dallas. I like Dallas. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of unique okay. qualities about it, right? Yeah. Um, and well, I think we, I wasn't tra- looking no, for trash. No, of course yeah. not. But we, you know, we complement each other. I always say North Texas is stronger together, over 8 million people in the region. Um, and I think a little competition is actually healthy for us. Right now is an interesting time in the city of Fort Worth because for a long time, we kind of were the stepbrother, like in the background to Dallas, no one really knew who we were. And while we still sometimes have a name ID issue, people don't really understand that Dallas and Fort Worth are two distinct cities. Fort Worth, by the way, is over a million people at this point. I think now that's changing. The, the the notoriety in a positive way of who City of Fort Worth is, who we want to be, um, is all happening right now at a, at a, at a really important time. And um, I understand, again, uh, in Wise County, um, your neighboring county, that growth and development is one of the major issues that they're, that they're dealing with. Is it the same for your city? Absolutely. We're the fastest growing city, large city in the entire country. In the entire country. Yes. And then being part of North Texas, which will thir- soon be the third largest metro region passing Chicago by 2030. Let that sink in for a second. Wow. Um, Dallas That's Fort- the region. The yeah, exactly. Area. Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport is a huge hub yep. uh, of success and economic development for our community. Um, second busiest airport in the entire world. So what do you do with that, right? Right. How do you manage that? You can't put your head in the sand and ignore the fact that you're growing. I think we're doing it better than any other large city in the country. How Um, so? It's partnership, right? It's working alongside, from, like say infrastructure, for instance. No project is likely going to get done if the city of Fort Worth does it alone. So working with Tarrant County partners, Wise County, Parker County. Then you turn to TxDOT or you look at our North Central Texas Council of Governments, which is our MPO. You draw down federal funds. All those things really are needed to keep the billions of dollars of infrastructure on the ground that you need. How do you manage um, the development from being unchecked? Or, or not positive development? It's sound city policies and planning. So actually right now we're going through a comprehensive planning process in 2024 to really look at what the city wants to be in the next 10, 20, 50 years into the future. Um, you and I talked before we got on the air about the Good Natured Initiative because yes. with growth also comes a responsibility to hold on to what's beautiful in the city. And we lose about 50 acres per week to development in the city of Fort Worth. And so we have the risk of really paving over all of our beautiful prairie space right. across, North, across North Texas. And this effort's really just focused on And a lot of the things that preserving. people wanted to move Texas, exactly. to move to Texas for. Yeah, is, I mean, and I understand again from, from my other conversations, it's a, it was a cowboy town, and yeah. that's what draws people to it. And right? it still is. You know, people people move to a community; they stay in a place because of quality of life. It's right. really simple, um, and I think uh, a beautiful outdoor space that's well invested in and access for all zip codes is incredibly important. So that's part of it. Um, and lastly, we're lucky because we can learn from other large cities that grew rapidly, maybe in the eighties, nineties, two thousands, and the mistakes that they made, maybe not preparing for growth. Yeah. Traffic congestion is usually the top concern. We just have to think about higher education education opportunities in K through 12, what it looks like to have the workforce of the future. And then how does a city government really meet the needs of a growing population? Pick up your trash on time, have excellent public (laughs) safety and response times from your police and fire departments. All those things really complement what you need to do to focus on good growth. Are there other cities in Texas that you looked at as um, an example, good or bad? Well, I think Austin is a good example and a bad example. A good example in that they grew really rapidly. Fort Worth weird too. Well, we were already kind of odd, right? In a good way. They call it Funky Town is one of our nicknames other than Cowtown, by the way. Um, No, I think Boston's a good example because they've been incredibly successful economically. They've had a huge surge of new jobs, especially in the tech tech arena. But they've also really grappled with tough issues around gentrification and traffic congestion and affordable housing. Right. And so what can a city like Fort Worth learn from a community that we're about 10 years behind in terms of growth patterns? And we have been able to sort of put into place and practices around those issues that we think really will um, will be better off long term than than what Austin's had to kind of come back from now. You mentioned this before, your your, your resume a little bit. Um, you were chief of staff for the prior mayor. Yeah. And before that, what were you doing? So what I was- What got you into all this? Yeah, good question. I started my career in Austin um, when I was a junior at UT, ended up interning for the Speaker of the House at the time, Speaker Craddock. He was the first Republican speaker since Reconstruction. So there was a lot of oh. change happening in Austin at the time. Um, then went on to work for a state representative, now state Senator Phil King, worked for Congresswoman Granger, who is now appropriations chairwoman. I went to law school and practiced 
practice law and worked for Mayor Price. I'm making this quick, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> but I left uh, Mayor Price's administration. There was a lot of stuff going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Things, I was yeah. having babies, all the things, right? Okay, um, right? Getting married. And so I, um, but I was most recently before becoming mayor, I founded a nonprofit called the Tarrant Two and Three Partnership in Fort Worth and Tarrant County that I'm very proud of. And it's still up and running, focused on post secondary pathways for all students in Fort Worth. And um, okay. that's college, career, military, really transforming the way we think about how to interact with young people and get them prepared for today's workforce. And what are you, what are the good government projects you're working on now? What good government are you bringing to the people of Fort Worth? Well, I think number one is a reminder in the city of Fort Worth, we're, we're a city manager form of government, which okay. I'm a big proponent of. I think um, while sometimes uh, there's a lot of- Briefly just explain to the folks Yeah, so the strong mayor, city manager. Essentially, city manager form of government is I'm an elected body. I consider myself the chairman of the board. Okay. And I have other board members and my council members. We have a CEO and our city manager and his entire executive team. They're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of a city. And your real, real responsibility is, is vision setting and casting implementation on behalf of the city. You're closer to the people and understanding where the, where the shifts need to happen. When it comes to good government, I think Fort Worth has already been on the trajectory of one of the best managed cities in the entire country. If I and, do say so myself. Well, of course, but yes. it's, it is basic, right? I right. mentioned this before. Let's take, for instance, the sexy topic of trash pickup. We have one of the largest partnerships with waste management in the country, meaning we have a public-private partnership. They manage all of our waste collection in the city of Fort Worth. And in turn, we get a private sector approach of innovation and new technologies and a very excellent workforce that's not as expensive to maintain as it would be if we had those employees in-house. And some cities are looking at that same model and Fort Worth is just on the forefront of that. That's just one example. And that's important because people don't care whether you're a Democrat or Republican. They, they want, want their, their trash, trash picked up. up. They right? want their potholes filled, yeah. And yeah. then, the, but the biggest issue, David, is public safety and the way cities have grappled with... Um, well, we're at the Conference of Mayors yeah. and you just spoke on policing. Yeah. Well, what was your what was the thrust of what you were talking about? Well, number one, you can't have a thriving community if you don't have a foundation set on good public safety and law enforcement. And a lot of cities across this country, especially post 2020, have really grappled with what it looks like to support their departments well, but also be pro community at the same time. I've talked about that a lot, pro police, pro community. Yeah. And we have one of the best departments in the country will be fully staffed by 2026. I have an outstanding police chief who joined me here today for this particular panel. Okay. Um, and this may sound like a lot of platitudes and words, but if you get into the data and understand where the city is today, our violent crime trending downward, our homicide rate down by 14%, the number of officers you need, um, and really a reaction from the community that's incredibly positive and supportive of your department, that's an enviable position to be in when you compare us to other large cities in the country. Immigration is a national issue. I'm sure in Texas it's even more, more of a local national issue. Yeah. What challenges are you facing there? Well, fortunately for Fort Worth, we're not seeing um, migrants moved into our community right now. We have seen that in the past during different waves. Look, as a Texan, you hear about this more acutely and have for years before it really started making national headlines. I'm a part of the Big City Mayors Coalition in the community, and just two weeks ago, we had a call that included um, Congressman Cisneros and some of our border mayors talking about immigration. And while I know there's so much political fervor around this and whether busing should be happening, at the, at the end of the day, our policies are not working. Mm -hmm. Our immigration system is broken and it is up to Congress and whoever is in the White House to solve it. And I think Republicans and Democrats alike are really frustrated at this point. And there are Texas border cities that are at full capacity and have been for years and cannot handle safely the number of people that are in their communities that need services, um, especially those that are seeking asylum. And so long term for the United States, we're never going to be a superior country long term if we can't grapple with what sound immigration policy looks like. And I, I don't have the answers, but I do know. <laughs> I, I don't think, sadly, I don't think anybody has. Well, the here's answers. the problem. Yeah. You have to take the partisanship out of it, which is easier yeah. said than done. No one's willing to do that. They've got to put down their R or their D and really focus on a solution. And that's what's so frustrating to listen to about this topic, because if you talk to mayors, if you talk to constituents in my city or any any city for that matter, um, there are there are good ideas out there that we can compromise on, but we've failed to do so. Is there anything that you've done in, in your city that's made a difference? Um, well, around I know you said it wasn't a big problem. Yeah, but, we yeah. haven't we haven't seen. Um, I, I'll say this: we have some of the best NGOs and nonprofits in the country when it comes to caring for those that are refugees or seeking asylum. Um, we're an incredibly diverse community. We're soon to be a majority minority. Um, when you look at our school districts, about sixty five percent of our school are now are now minorities, um, mostly in the Hispanic population, which is incredibly powerful for the future generation of Texas. Yep. Um, and how do you lean into that? 
um, is important and be, make it a positive attribute. But at the same time, there's so much fervor around immigration issues that it is causing a lot of concern, especially in our immigrant communities. Getting back a little bit to, to growth and development, what are the things that you're looking for or your leadership is, is looking to do to make sure that the growth that happens in Fort Worth is positive growth and sustainable growth? So it's t it's hard at times, right? For the most part, though, our neighborhood leaders get it right. Occasionally, you get a nimbyism issue that you really have to override okay. or make sure your neighborhood understands this is not the kind of project that you should be, um, you know, be against. But for the most part, listening to neighbors is first and foremost, allowing your council members to really lead on these issues. Um, I don't take a position on a particular development or zoning case until I've heard from my council member, because oftentimes okay. they've answered tens, dozens, hundreds of emails, public meetings to understand where their constituents really want to be. Right. Um, but then lastly is understanding where the economic focus should be for the city of Fort Worth. We have industry clusters we're focused on in the city. We know what kind of um, new corporate partners, business expansion efforts we should be really leaning into. And it doesn't really fit into that category. Should we be doing it? Because is it a long lasting opportunity for the city of Fort Worth? And there's still a large stockyard uh, business, is there not? Oh, absolutely. So the, you're maybe talking about the Fort Worth Stockyards, which is um, a historic stockyards in, in Fort Worth. It's pretty transformative. You've not been there in a while. It's worth not. going to. It's an awesome <laughs> entertainment district for okay. our community. Home to the Fort Worth Herd, which is the only twice daily cattle drive in the entire world, if you'd like to go watch it. 11 a.m. or 4 p.m. Our Texas Longhorns come down Exchange Avenue. Um, but jokes aside, the city is, is changing rapidly in the right direction. Okay. And um, it's, it's honestly... And how do you balance that with maintaining, you know, I live in New York City. I can't yeah. imagine Longhorns going down the street of a major city, but yet they do twice a day in your town. They do twice a day. And that's got to be an attractive thing to people who are coming to your yeah. area or who live there and want to maintain that. Well, to mention, How do you do that? Well, you mentioned growth. If you change the fabric of who we are as a community, yeah. if you lost that heritage and history, then who is Fort Worth in the first place, right? And so exactly. while some people may not understand it till they see it, it is incredibly special for Fort Worth. And that's just one example. Um, we also have a beautiful cultural district, world-class museums from the from the Kimball to the Modern to the Eamon Carter. Um, and then the National Cowgirl Museum is also in the cultural district, home to Dickey's Arena, which was just named number one uh, venue in the world. The Cowgirls yeah. Hall of Fame. Well, that's across the street from Dickey's, exactly. Okay. So there's a lot <laughs> happening here, but I, I say right, that. I only ask this of people yeah. in Texas, how many cowboy hats do you have? Oh, I have two really nice ones. Okay. Yes. Yeah. A work one at a, at a, at no, a, no, you wear them both for, it's rodeo season. So David, okay. on Friday, tomorrow night, I'll be dressed in sequins and a cowboy hat. I'm sorry. I'm going to miss it. You are going to miss it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, um, all of that is just the preamble to what we're really here to talk about, which is our good government questionnaire. Okay. We're going to get to the heart of your philosophy of government. Are okay. you ready? I'm ready. All right. You were uh, on city council. You were a chief of staff. Now you're the mayor from those positions, define good government. So I was never on city council, just for Sorry. clarification. That's Sorry. okay, okay, you're good. Um, so for chief of staff, my perspective as good government is- elected. Putting it all together. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's really about an under listening, understanding before you make decisions. Um, I think rash decisions, especially in good government, good public policy are usually backfire on you. But at the same time, you also have to use instinct to make a decision and move on. Those that you really get stuck um, or look back on a decision and think they maybe should have changed their mind, in my mind, is really the wrong thing to think about good government. So your definition of good government is stopping, waiting, listening, and then making a decision. Well, this is hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like a These dating questionnaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think yeah, it's people focused, knowing your community, and, and having a certain level of intuition that only came from listening to your constituents. How do you judge your success or lack thereof? What do you use as your personal yardstick for whether you're doing a good job? Well, I think number one is what kind of feedback you're getting from community members. Are they generally happy to be in your city? Are you making the right policy decisions and getting the right reactions from them? I also put a lot of stock in my relationships with my council members. That's sometimes difficult because you have a lot of personalities. I have 10 council members and then I make the 11th vote on council. Okay. So what that looks like is really important to me as well. And then how my city management team is working together Mind you, we're a city management form of government. I rely on them to be the experts in their departments and their fields and bringing us policy decisions to make. If we had a huge amount of conflict and a continuation of not getting along, and I think in the end, you're really, in my mind, making the wrong decisions and maybe not successful at that point. Um, what's the interaction like between um, you know Wise County, your neighboring county, and Tarrant County, where you are? How do they all work together? 
Well, historically, our entire region has worked together very well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our county, our county commissioners court, our county judges all are really close. Our mayors all work together. We have a Tarrant County Mayor's Council, and I see no reason that would change in the future. But I think it takes constant communication and a willingness to see past partisanship to make decisions together that are best for North Texas. So how do the people of, of Fort Worth know if they're getting good government? Um, and how, do, how should they hold you accountable? Well, they vote every two years in okay. our elections. So that's a pretty easy way to hold people accountable. Same thing for our city council members. Um, and is I two think year, is two years, is that a short term? I it's mean, a pretty it's, short it's term. Short? Yeah, I mean, think about members of Congress. You're running constantly. Right. It's part of our city charter. We probably should change it, but it is what it is right now. Okay. Are you trying um, to change it? Um, we might in the future. We, they've tried before and was unsuccessful for a variety of reasons. Okay. But I still think with the right communication to constituents, they'd be willing to. Um, I... I what was the question again? I forgot. <laughs> how do people hold you accountable in that? And how do well, they again, know yeah, they're... voting, yeah. yeah. And then it's back to it's back to basics. The things you should be taking care of as a city. If you're not doing well, people are going to notice pretty quickly. If you're not repairing roads, if you're not building out infrastructure that's needed. If you're not, if your parks are unclean, if there's litter everywhere, if your police don't respond, all of those things have an immediate reaction from the public. And I think that's how they hold us accountable. Are you, how much are you out in the public? Do you Constant, go to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's lots of activity, that's do for you, sure. Do you go to the grocery store and do the shopping I do for the go to the grocery and... store, although I do love a curbside pickup. That is really, <laughs> really helpful, yeah. Um, no, you, you, are, you as mayor, you are closest to the people, which I think is really special about the job. And we get oh. to run nonpartisan in Fort Worth, which is really helpful. How long does it take you if you go to the grocery store? Do people stop you the whole time every time? Um, it depends on the day, but yeah, sometimes it's a little tough to get through the store, especially if I've got my seven-year-old in, tw- in tow. I'm trying to bat off whatever candy he's trying oh. to put well, cart. that's different. But yeah. I mean, do people stop you on the street oh, absolutely. all the time? Yes, most definitely. Does I mean, everyone, are you well known? Does everyone know you? I think they, so. It's, so it's they, a weird feeling. Yeah. yeah. You, you, especially now, um, now that I've been mayor for over two years, people are starting to recognize my face a little bit differently. If people feel like they're not getting the government that they want or the good government that they think they deserve, what should they do? I think contact our office. I mean, it's very that it's very simple. I mean, it does it takes a phone call or an email to say this is something I'm concerned about. Can you fix it? We have great constituent services in the mayor's office. Our city manager's office is very responsive. Your council members all do the same thing. I always tell people your government is very close to you. All it takes is you to pick up the phone, send a text, or send an email, and you're going to get an answer to that question. And you're good about answering. And very the much so. It takes care of all that. Quickly. Absolutely yes. Um, My favorite is to call someone that sent a snarky email. <laughs> and inevitably, it changes their attitude, right? They're like, oh, I didn't think you'd see that. I'm like, well, yeah, I saw it. Well, Tell me what's going on. That's the yeah. problem, yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, are, you, are you accessible? Do you feel like you're accessible? Uh, very accessible. I mean, the phone that you're holding is the key to everything, right? Yes. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse. I don't have to be in the office to be um, accountable to people, but you're also always on, always on call, so to speak. And I never get to turn mayor off, right? If I'm at my kid's baseball game at Little League Field, I'm yes. still the mayor at the same time. And just creating the right kind of balance. Um, as human beings, sometimes we forget about that. Um, we expect our politicians, our elected leaders to be perfect all the time and be on the job. And for me, I'm a mom first, and so I kind of have to create the best balance possible. <laughs> Is it hard to put on a T-shirt and shorts and just walk out of the house? Oh, I don't care anymore. No, I don't care. <laughs> but I am I'm good about a baseball cap. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Um, as an elected official, what would you, you've been in government for a long time, both as a staffer and, and as an elected official. What would you like people to know about government and about how government works? That there are phenomenal people that are public servants. 99% of the people that are in government are there because they want to be. They get recruited all the time to go do important work um, in the private sector, and they stay because they love what they're doing. Um, number two, it's so funny right now, especially in 2024, the conspiracy theory. Government's out to get me. They're doing this. We don't have that much energy. I always joke that <laughs> you've ever seen Parks and Recreation and yes. Beep? We're kind of a combination of the two. Um, and we're, we're trying to make decisions that we think are good for today and also good for for the future. Um, and lastly, your government is as good as you are. I mean, come to us with solutions or problems that you see and we can work together. And I think in Fort Worth, we've always had a really collaborative spirit, which has made us long-term very successful. Who's your political hero? Ooh, Madeline Albright. Really? Yeah. I think it takes a special person to have been in diplomacy, especially as a woman during her time period um, with her background and navigating all that she has. So growing up, did mm-hmm. you want to be mayor? Did you want to be president? Did you want to be president no, of your senior class? No, not at all. I, did, I was president of senior class. No, okay. I um, I uh, was grew up in a really small town down a dirt road. Yeah. Um, my um, people have heard me say this before. I had a party line until I was 13. And I, uh, I felt like the 
higher education for me, going to University of Texas at Austin was really transformative um, to get to see different opportunity. I never thought I'd run for office, though. I did not see this for myself. I loved being a staffer and being behind the well, scenes. What made you decide to run? Um, partisanship. I saw it in 2021. <laughs> it was post-January yeah. 6th. The people running were really seen bent on a partisan lean for the community, and I just don't think that makes good government, and I don't think it makes a good mayor. Um, so I've never been to Fort Worth. I'm coming to Fort Worth. We're going to go out. We're going to go to the herd. We're going to go out. We're going to go out and have dinner. We're, okay, we're, I'm ready. What, what are we eating? Where are we going? Ooh, What's your favorite? If you've never local been to Fort dish? Worth, I think we're going to go to Joe T's and have a margarita and have really good Mexican food. How's that sound? What are we eating? What Mexican food? What oh, it's really simple. You get two choices at dinner: it's fajitas, chicken or beef, or an enchilada plate. I'd go enchilada plate. And what do you what do you cook at home? What's your What's your uh, Oh, I'm, pasta usually is pretty popular in my house. Hamburgers yeah. for the boys. It depends. If I get too creative, they won't eat it. I know you talked about the good-natured program. Yeah. Give me another example of some good government happening right now in Fort Worth. Um, I think our partnership, both on uh, Botanic Gardens and Dickey's Arena, those are public-private partnerships that wouldn't have been possible without the right um, focus from the city of Fort Worth to make that happen, but at the same time also need a private sector partner. We have a beautiful historic uh, Botanic Gardens that was in under repair um, before we took over a partnership with BRIT, our Botanic Research Institute of Texas, and because of that, you're seeing huge dividends come to return. And I already mentioned Dickey's Arena, which is a world-class arena that our Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo is going on right now for three weeks, um, an events venue that is really enviable for the country and we've been able to host important things like the NCAA gymnastics championships in that arena okay. and it would have been possible without a public private partnership. Maddie Parker, mayor of uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Dave. Pleasure I appreciate you. you. Thanks for coming by. Rapid. All That's right. good. Okay, great. Thank you. Where do you get your news from? Where do you get your state and local government news from? Because that's getting harder and harder and it's essential to stay updated with your community and it's becoming increasingly important to know what's going on in other cities and states because they're likely facing challenges that you're grappling with too or you're going to face eventually. That's why we'd like to welcome our new partner, Route 50, to the show. Route 50 is a leading online publication covering state and local governments across the country. They've written about states protecting themselves against the rise in cyber attacks, counties using AI to better support citizen services, local responses to crumbling infrastructure and extreme weather, and much, much more. There's a lot there. It's a one-stop shop for issues affecting state and local governments and their residents. And that's you. That's all of us. Do yourself a favor and go to Route50.com to see the topics and solutions they cover and learn what other people in government are doing. They also deliver a daily newsletter called Route 50 Today. I see it in my inbox every morning. I check it out and you should too. Thanks again, Route 50. We're excited to have you on board and being a partner here at The Good Government Show. What is it that county government does? That's the question county commissioners get asked the most. And the simple answer is everything. On The Good Government Show, we're so lucky to have talked with so many county commissioners and other county officials that have shown us how effective county government is. County government dates back to, get this, 1634, making it one of the oldest forms of government in the United States. Think about it. Roads, highways, hospitals, schools, recycling, law enforcement, water, sewers, and most of the county, those services are maintained by the county, that's county government. The National Association of Counties represents all 3,069 counties across the USA. NACO helps county government work better together through things like sharing best practices. When county government works well, well, that's just good government. So I learned a few things. First, two cowboy hats and sorry to miss her day in sequence. I want to ask later, just two pairs of boots. She didn't say if any of those were sequined. Uh, Fort Worth Mayor Parker said government should be people focused. It's important, she said, to take a moment, listen, and make decisions based on what your personal research tells you. With that philosophy, good government can only follow. So that's our show. Thanks for listening. Make sure you share us and like us on all your favorite social media platforms. And please review us and let others know that The Good Government Show is a podcast to listen to. Be sure to join us next time right here, right where you're listening to us now. I'm Dave Martin. This is The Good Government Show. The Good Government Show is a Valley Park production. Jim Ludlow, Dave Martin, that's me, and David Snyder are the executive producers. Our show is edited and produced by Jason Sturchik. Please subscribe, then share us, and like us, and review us. That's the best way to make sure we're able to keep telling these stories of our government working for all of us. Then listen to the next episode of The Good Government Show.